I just started it. I right, shall one, first and foremost, we give our praise on the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Chagadash. The bonus to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, please say, Tashi, Zayakia, to the elect that are scattered across the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth and faith and our sincerity. I'm the bro Shamala. Brother Shamala Wan. Yeah, we brothers from the GMS Houston camp. Uh, coming back with a Gentiles part two lesson, because we did a previous lesson, uh, probably about a month ago. Right, this is a follow-up lesson, which um, shouldn't be that long. We touched on some important um, points in the first lesson. So uh, this lesson, we're just going to go through um, Romans, uh, the ninth chapter. All right, some of the verses in here um, explaining what Paul meant all right, when he's mentioning the Gentiles. All right, so you can read... Uh, you can read that, that verse out. Uh, this is Romans chapter 9, starting at verse 24. It reads, Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. All right, so it says, Even us, whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, we know that the Lord is not calling these different nations into the faith, into this truth, or to inherit anything. Because the, these different nations got nothing to do with us, with all our statutes and commandments. They never have and never and never will. Right? In the coming kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which, which will be ruled by the Israelites, they will follow our laws. Right? We will, our laws will basically well, the Most High's laws will reign in the earth, and they will have no choice but to follow it. You see, but we will be over them. This thing is for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's why that this um, it's called us preaching the truth. It's called the the ministry of reconciliation. It's about re reconciling our brothers and sisters, right, of the elect. You see, to come back into the fold, right? Tell them that we are not Negroes, we are not, you know, um, Latinos and Native Americans, all right? But he said, even us whom we had called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Now, why did he say that? Why is he mentioning the Gentiles? All right, because you get this word Gentile here. The word Gentile in this scripture is ethnos. All right, let's see. Strong's G, 1484, ethnos, ethnos. And when you go into this word, right, basically just means a tribe, nation, people, a group. Just means nation, basically. It's not really going into what or who it is talking about, right? That's why you have to use context. You have to use what is Paul talking about in this chapter and who is he talking to? All right. And once you keep reading down, you will find out what is he talking about when he says Gentiles. All right. So first, uh, you can get that John 7, 35. You can, John chapter, you can read it and break it down. No? <clears throat> okay, Con. This is John chapter 7 and verse 35. It reads, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And going into context, uh, this is the Pharisees speaking amongst themselves on Yahweh Shah's behalf. But um, going back into the scripture, verse 35, it reads, Then say the Jews among themselves, Whither will, will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? And real quick, 
that word dispersed goes into diaspora, which means Israelites in um it it means Israelites which were scattered amongst the nations. That's what it's talking about, amongst the foreigners. I so get it. Says, okay, Khan. Songs G twelve ninety. Diaspora. Diaspora. Says a scattering dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. Proving, brother proving a point that the brother just made. This is James 101. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, the Hawashah Mashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. So the tribes were scattered. You got it up. Right? So going back in the scripture, it says, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Now, when it says that the first Gentiles, which is being said, that's talking about the other nations, the, the, the natural Gentiles, the heathen, the non-Israelites. Then the second Gentiles is talking about the Israelites those Israelite foreigners that that word uh, diaspora went into. So you had Israelites among other nations. So going into the scripture, they were saying, speaking on Yahweh Shah's behalf, will he go amongst the scattered Israelites that are among the heathen and teach those Israelites, you know, those being those Gentiles, which are truly Israelites, not a natural Gentile. I got a precept real quick. Uh -huh. Thirteen and three, confess them before the Gentiles, each of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. All right, that's what that scripture is talking about. Like we we were um, the ones that were scattered amongst the heathen. So that's what they were actually how was shot because how was shot said, "Without go, you cannot come." All right, he said that. Uh, let me see. All right, you shall seek me, and shall not find me. Where I am, that you cannot come. So like, what are you talking about? He finna go teach them heathen. Like, you know, he was referring to our people, but he was, when well, they were referring to our people, they were actually calling them heathen, though. You see, but they knew that our people were, were amongst them. It's Hosea 8 and 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a, as a vessel wherein is no pleasure, because they were going to be following the ways after the Gentiles. All right. I don't know if you was finished breaking down the scripture. Right? Yeah, you got it up. Con. So yeah, the brother broke it down perfectly. Right? The, when it says it dispersed among the Gentiles, it's Israelite that was scattered amongst the actual heathen. But when it says and teach the Gentiles, it's actually referring to the Israelite foreigners. All right, you can grab um Acts 6 and 1. This is Acts chapter 6 and verse 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Right. It speaks about the Grecians. Now, when you go into this word Grecian. Strong's G, 1675, Hellenistes. Hellenist taste. Right, says a Hellenist, one who imitates the manners and customs of the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. Used in the New Testament of Jews, born in foreign lands speaking Greek. So these people knew that they were Israelites, but they spoke the Greek tongue. All right. So you had Israelites who were, you know, um, amongst these Greeks speaking that language. Just like you got us today, we, we're not speaking our native tongue, which is the Hebrew. We're speaking English. All right. But we know that we are Israelites. Okay? We're just Americanized. Back then it was Hellenized, but it's Americanized today. All right. And, um, and back in John 7 and 35, right, which you know, that, let me go back to it, because I forgot to pull that up. 
that Greek word. I had it up, I just forgot to read it. Strong's G, 1672, Helene, Helene. Right, it says a Greek either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or the Greek island of colonies. And in a wider sense, the name embraced all nations, not the Jews that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks their own. The primary reference is to a, a difference of religion and worship. So in here, they, they, they uh, refer to the Israelites as being Helen. Meaning that a hey, they, they totally did not know that they were Israelites. So they were actually considered heathen because they were they they themselves actually thought that they were whatever nation that they came up under. And they were they were acting and you know behaving, having certain mannerisms and custom of these different nations, right? It's like you got our people today. They believe that you know they're African Americans, right? Americans, or even just African, they come back from Africa, right? They're, they're clinging on to these, these different um, peoples, right? These different nations. They don't know that they're Israelites. And they're eating, they're eating abominable foods, this and that. Celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving, they they fully into that way, right? So that's that gives you an example of what Helen would be. All right, you can get Acts sixteen to one up. Um, hey, and that just to uh, back you up on that in the book of Second Ezra, the second chapter, Ezra calls the Israelites heathen. Uh, if I could get this real quick, I this is. Um, Second Ezra chapter two, and I'll start at verse um, thirty-one for context. It says, "I Ezra received the charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel, showing you who He's about to go to." It says that I shall go unto Israel, but when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. Verse thirty-four. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. We're showing you in this scripture, Ezra received the word of the Lord to go unto the Israelites. And he went unto the Israelites, but they they despised the commandments. Then Ezra, Ezra called them heathen, but he was still speaking to Israelites. All right, so oh ye hear oh, oh ye heathen that hear and understand. How can you hear and understand? Through the Holy Spirit. In the book of Baruch, the second chapter, the, the Lord said, I will give them ears to hear and their hearts to understand. Speaking about the Israelites waking up in the latter days. All right, so only the Israelites will be able to receive that Holy Spirit to be able to understand, you know, the gospel. All right? It's like Yahweh said, the mysteries. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is 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 given unto you to understand. Right. Well, she was speaking unto the disciples, but it's really for the elect. But all of this but be belongs unto Israel. But you can read Acts sixteen and one. Not great precept. Uh, you want me to get it now? You said you got a precept. No, I said I said it's a good precept. Okay. Fine. Uh, this is Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. It reads, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, a son, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek. All right. So it says that Tim Timothy, you see, it says, that his mother was, was a Jewish, which means she was, she was an Israelite. She was a woman who was an Israelite, and she kept the customs. And she believed in, in, in Yehoshua, but it said his father was a Greek, meaning that he was fully into that way. He was fully into that Greek way. He he knew about Israel right, because his wife was into it, you see. 
but he was he was into that the whole Greek establishment that was going on during that time. Whatever he was into, he might have been in the military, he might have been, you know, but as naked in the gym, you know, whatever it was, but he was into that. All right. But when you go into that word, Greek, it says Helen, you see, showing you that he wouldn't, he, he didn't, he didn't accept the fact that he was an Israelite. He was fully into that Greek way. He was a Greek. That's why I said that. And now we can go back to Romans 9, 24. Right? <clears throat> okay. Gone. Romans chapter 9 and verse 24. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in O.C. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. God, you got it up. God, and, and that was... Um, that was the Apostle Paul quoting the book of uh, Hosea. You want me to get that real quick? You got it. Okay, this is Hosea chapter 2 and verse 23. It reads, And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Mm -hmm. See, it's, 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 it's going to a specific people that he said that he told them that you are not my people. Right? But then it's going to be said, he said he's going to have mercy on them. Right? And then y'all you, are going to be the people. So who did he say that to? Right? Let's, let's read the 25th verse back in, um, I mean, 26 back in Romans 9. Romans 9 and 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Mm -hmm. So he mentioned O.C., right? Which is talking about Hosea. And you can grab that preacher up, Oc, and you can start at 6. Con. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo Ami. I mean, Laruhama. So like yeah, and call her name Laruhama. Which is. For I will. Laruhama. So like you. Which is Laruhama. Especially La Rahma. All right. No mercy. You got it. Gone. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. So he read in Hosea 2 and 23 about him not having. Let me let me just let me just let me just grab that again real quick. Mm -hmm. It's clearly showing you what the Lord was talking about and who he was talking to. Hosea 2. And 23, and I will, I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that have not obtained mercy. Who did the Lord say that have not obtained mercy? Israel says, For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. That's what he's talking about. You can keep going up. John, Hosea 1 and 7, he says, But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God. And will not and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now, when she had weaned Laruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Lo Ami, mm -hmm. for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So he's talking to the same people. Lo Ami, La Amya, y'all are not my people. Why is the Lord saying this? Because he was casting Israel off for being whores in the spirit, for worshiping these different idols, being like these different nations, going after these different gods. They were like whores. So he's like, look, 
I'm taking away mercy from y'all. I'm casting y'all away. Y'all ain't my people no more. You see? So the, the Lord didn't acknowledge us as his people. All right? Because of the things that we were doing. All right? But continue on. Verse 10. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Right, in the place that it said unto them, ye are not my people. Right, here in America, we're called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, whatever this, this uh, whatever Esau, which is a so-called white man, whatever label he put on us, that is what people believe us to be. They do not believe us to be the Israelites. Even when we claim that we're the Israelites, you got people in our land that says that they are us. So basically, is they saying that y'all not the people, right? But a hey, Ezekiel thirty-seven, Revelation the eleven chapter is proven. Prophecy is proven that we are those people. You see, in this place, America, we are we are waking up, right? as being the true people of the Heavenly Father. And when Paul was taking this, he was using it, you know, for that time, for them, for the Israelite foreigners that were basically scattered in different lands, that were speaking these, these different languages, right? Mainly Greek because of Antiochus' epiphanies, right? He forced the Greek customs on our people, right? And turned them into Greeks. Right. And we, we went over this, you know, in our last lesson that we did. Right. But I'm just, you know, kind of going through it, you know, again, that Judas Maccabees and them that fought against Antiochus Epiphanes and everything that he was establishing. And that's when you had the Jews that were of the circumcision was a, a result of what Judas Maccabees did. But you still had the ones that consented onto Antiochus Epiphanes and what he wanted. Right. So, and they taught that unto their children and unto their children's children, and that's how they became Greeks. You see? All right, so you can get, uh, go back to Romans 9, 27. Uh, <clears throat> Romans 9, verse 27. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So he, he said, as Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. So he let you know right here in the 27th verse, who was he talking about? All right. So you can't get caught up on this Gentile word, right? In verse 24, because we were made Gentile. We were, we were made Greeks. This is a this was a part of our history. All right. So you cannot include any other nation in that because it's dealing with us. Just because you see the word Gentile does not mean it's open up to everybody. All right? Because the nations gotta get judged. <laughs> you read Joel the third chapter, hey, the nation gotta get judged. You know, for what they've done to his people. So if the Gentiles are gonna be saved, why does it why do the nations gotta be judged then? All right, you can um, read Romans 9 and, and 3 to 5, and then we'll close out. Unless you had any other precept you want to bring out, bro. Uh, no, nah, nah. Okay. Romans 9 and verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who is Paul's kinsman? Right? Because you read Romans 11, chapter 1, Paul said, he said that he is an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. And my kinsmen according to the flesh. So these were his, were his kinsmen by blood, not spiritual, not through believing. Yeah? This is by blood. You had some? Uh, no. Nah. Okay. Verse 4, who are Israelites? See, who are Israelites? Mm -hmm. You got it. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants 
and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So it speaks about the adoption, being adopted back to the Father because we were cast off, like we read in Hosea, the first chapter. Right? We were no people. Then the most have mercy upon us. Through what? Through this, through this gospel, right through the truth. You see, this this all what, what Paul was 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 telling, you know, these these Israelites. You right? there was one that were into that into that Greek way, right? The ones who were uh who even knew they were Israelites. He was just explaining everything down of what Yahweh had had done. Or his sacrifice had opened up all of them to come back in, right, through 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 grace and and, and faith, right, through Yahweh Shah. Right? Said so the adoption, the glories, the kingdom of heaven, the covenants, the new, the new covenant, the old covenant, right? All these the law was given unto, unto us as a people. You see, the Lord was only dealing with Israel, right, from the beginning. That's why we needed Yahweh Shah, right? That's why there had to be an adoption in the first place. Can you ask the question that why 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 did it have to be an adoption? They don't they don't know. They're just gonna make up some bullshit because we were cast off because of our disobedience for the for the, the to the covenant that was given unto us. So in the giving of the law, the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, serving the Heavenly Father, the priests were the servants. But hey, we are priests today through this knowledge. So. Only the Israelites become into this thing. It says, and the promises. The promises that were promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. <laughs> hey, it rests upon the lot of Israel. All right, you can read the next verse, Zach. Right? Romans 9 and 5. It reads, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all God bless forever. Amen. Yeah, I was shy. Hey, he came. He came from from the the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? Yeah, I was shy. Came from the tribe of Judah. So when he came as the Messiah, as the Savior, Matthew one and twenty one to it says that he shall save his people from from his sins. That was the whole reason that he came. He was going to be that land to restore that peace, to reconcile us back to the Heavenly Father. You see, so we can receive the promises, so that we can receive the adoption, the glory, all of these things through Yahweh Shah. All right. So that was a lesson. Unless you had a, uh, another precept, Bob? No, nah, that was that was the point. I huh. So, you know, we hope y'all edified out there. And, you know, that one give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Krakadash, the honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and to the Akiam, to the elect, you know, that are scattered abroad, believing in this truth, doing all that they can, you know, to uh, escape the judgment to come. All right. Shalom. Shalom.